Hi, my name is Abigail Langdon, and I am one of the Midwest Dairy Ambassadors from Nebraska. I joined the ambassadorship program because I did not come from a dairy farm. I come from a beef herd operation, so like hamburgers and steaks and all that good stuff you guys eat, that's what I raise. And we also have some pigs, so bacon, mm, yummy. But I didn't know a lot about um, dairy cows, dairy farms, the dairy industry at all. And so I wanted an opportunity to be able to learn more because it was something I was really curious and really interested in. So I joined this program and I have learned so much about dairy already. I've met some pretty awesome people and I get to talk to people who were like me and didn't know a whole lot about the dairy industry and help them know more and help to teach them about what all goes on and how their milk and their ice cream are made and where it comes from, which I think is a really cool thing. And I get to do awesome things like read books to you guys. So today, we're going to read a book. It is called Clarabelle, Making Milk and So Much More. And we get to follow two little kids around their farm and learn about what all goes on. So let's get started. Just over the crest of a freshly mown alfalfa field, in a huge white roof dairy barn lives Clarabelle. Here's a picture of Clarabelle. Clarabelle's black fuzzy ears jut out at right angles from the sides of her knobby head. Her soft brown eyes are framed in black and separated by a wide band of white that runs from the top of her head to her muzzle. Her angular body is covered in huge black spots that look like splashes of ink. A few pieces of grain and a stray alfalfa leaf or two stick to her whiskery nose, which spends a good part of each day burrowed in a pile of feed. So here is Clarabelle again. And in this picture, you can even see the food is hanging out of her mouth. Clarabelle is a Holstein dairy cow. She lives with 1,200 other cows on a family farm called Norseways, owned by Sam and Josh's parents and grandparents. The barn sprawls across the top of a rolling hill in northern Wisconsin, surrounded by alfalfa fields and hay. Thick groves of oak and maple trees dot the landscape, providing habitat for deer and other wildlife that feed on some of the corn grown for the cows. Sam and Josh, along with their two older brothers, help at the dairy when they are not in school. So here's Clarabelle again. There's a picture of their dairy farm. Those are all the barns that the cows stay in and where the cows get milked. And that's a picture of Josh and Sam. Clarabelle is big and bony. She weighs nearly 1,500 pounds, about as much as a soccer team of second graders with their coaches thrown in for good measure. And she's almost as tall as Josh and Sam's dad. Each year, she gives birth to a calf that weighs about 100 pounds. Then she produces milk that is bottled for drinking or made into cheese, ice cream, yogurt, and other dairy products. There's a picture of Clarabelle. To make all that milk, Clarabelle eats heaping piles of hay, corn, and soybean meal. The seven tons of feed she chomps down on every year is enough to fill a bedroom to the ceiling three times. Her amazing four compartment stomach recycles leftover food and fiber crop products such as brewer's grain, sugar beet pulp, and cotton seed. Finally, the manure she creates during all this manufacturing helps generate electricity. It also provides fresh bedding for the cow stalls as well as fertilizer for the crops grown to feed her. You could say that Clarabelle is a four-footed factory. So this right here is a picture of the hay that she eats. This is corn that's ground up into powder so cows can digest it better. This is cotton seed and then this is corn silage and all that gets mixed together and makes yummy food for the cows 
Before Clarabelle can produce milk, she has to give birth to a calf at a calf. At Norswiss, calves are born every day of the year. And on the day Clarabelle's calf is born, four other cows give birth too. Cows don't usually need assistance with calving, but Josh and Sam happen to be helping in the barn when Car Clarabelle and two other cows calf. So there's Clarabelle with her baby, and there's Josh and Sam with the calf. Within minutes of the big event, the newborns begin to struggle to their feet as each one endures enthusiastic cleaning by its mother's sandpapery tongue. Snuggled in the deep straw of the maternity pen, the calves are fed a warm, creamy first milk by Sam and Josh. So there's some other cows that had their calves. And this is Josh and Sam feeding the baby calves their bottle of first milk. After giving birth, Clarabelle really goes to work. Three times a day, beginning at 7 o'clock in the morning, she and other cows from her pen trundle down a lane toward the milking center at Norswiss. Clarabelle waits her turn to enter a stall in the center, where a worker cleans and prepares her for milking. She stands quietly while the milking machine is attached to her four teats. There's Clarabelle again. There they are, going to the milking station. And here is a picture of a worker and cows on the milking station. Music floats from a boom boombox near the entry to the milking center as Clarabelle stands placidly chewing her cud. All the pumps and monitors that run the milking equipment are located in the basement beneath the center, so the equipment stays clean and the center remains quiet for the cows. Whirring fans blow fresh air through the building. As soon as the machine is attached to Clarabelle, she starts giving milk. In less than the time it takes for an average kid to eat a bowl of cereal, she gives nearly five gallons, enough to pour 160 bowls of cereal. The milk then travels from the milking machine through a pipeline to a refrigerated cooler where it is kept fresh and cold. So there's all the cows at their milking station. And they're cleaning it for him. And then this is the basement where the milk goes to the coolers. And that is what gets placed on a cow that milks them. Each of the coolers that Josh and Sam are perched on holds 6,000 gallons of milk, enough to make thousands of pounds of cheese or pails of ice cream. Twice a day, a tanker truck pulls up to the milking center and the driver transfers a full cooler of milk to his truck. He dips out a sample of each load to test it for bacteria and butterfat and protein and to make sure it is clean and pure. Then the milk is hauled to a cheese factory nearby. The empty cooler is automatically washed and sanitized. So these are those big milk coolers that Josh and Sam are standing by. And this is the tanker truck that picks up the milk. And that is the milk being tested. To manufacture all that creamy white milk, Clarabelle has to eat a lot. She stands at the manger and eats several bushels of feed at one time. Then she lies down and brings some of it back up into her mouth and chews it like bubblegum. This chewing is called rumination or cud chewing, and it's the process that allows a cow to obtain energy from plants. Clarabelle spends four out of every six hours eating and rechewing her feed. Stuff that humans could never digest travels through her four compartment stomach and breaks down into nutritious food. All that chewing makes her produce nearly 30 gallons of saliva a day. That's a lot of drool. The rumen is the largest of four compartments in Clarabelle's stomach. It holds 25 gallons of material, or about as much as your bathtub holds when it's half full. 
The rumen works like a huge, churning, bubbling vat where bacteria and other microorganisms break down the tough, chewy feed into nutrients Clarabelle can use to make food. So there's Clarabelle, and there she's licking her nose. And this is the four compartment stomach that she eats and re chews food with. Mounds of chopped corn and alfalfa silage are stored at North Swiss, ready to feed to the cows. Silvery bins of soybean meal, ground corn, and other dry feeds are lined up next to a giant truck scale. Every day, a worker scoops up piles of silage with a machine that has fat wheels and looks like an overgrown go-kart. The machine is called a telehandler because of its telescoping bucket scoops up each ingredient lifts it high into the air, and dumps it into a mixer truck. All the good stuff for Clarabelle's balanced diet is measured into the machine and tossed like an enormous garden salad. So those are the bins that hold the dry feed, and then it gets dumped into a mixing truck. And this is the telehandler that scoops silage and puts it into that truck for them to make food. The mixture is specially formulated by a dairy nutritionist to meet the needs of all the cows at Norway's. The recipe appears on the computer screen in the mixer truck and in the barn office. The daily feast is delivered right in front of Clarabelle and her hungry herd mates when they come back from the milking center. So there they are eating. But before Clarabelle returns to her meal, a worker scrapes the manure from her pen. The cow stalls are cleaned and fresh bedding made from manure is blown from a bedding shooter into the stalls to keep the cows comfortable. Cow stalls full of manure? That sounds pretty yucky. Enormous, a complicated bunch of equipment in storage vats located just beyond Clarabelle's barn turn manure into clean bedding, electricity, and fertilizer for the soil on the farm. So this is a blower truck. I had to double check myself to make sure I was right. And that blows the bedding into the stalls for the cows. And this is where they take the manure from the dirty pens and it sits in these tanks and gets made into electricity. The bedding that you see over here, or it gets put on crop ground for farmers to grow their crops and acts like fertilizer. The system is called an anaerobic digester, a fancy name for a group of separators, tanks, and converters in which microscopic bacteria eat cow manure and in the process create methane. Methane is a flammable gas that is used to power a generator. The generator makes electricity which is sold to the local, local power company. The leftover solids from the digester are used as bedding for the cows. At Norwis, the electrical generator runs day and night, creating enough electricity to power 400 homes. So this is Josh and Sam checking out the digester station. This is the manure, the leftover parts of the manure that get made into bedding. And this is Sam and Josh with their grandfather looking at how the digester works. So those are all the plans on how it makes either electricity, fertilizer, or bedding for the cows. Josh and Sam's dairy farm is a big operation. Many people besides their family work there. They help cultivate hundreds of acres of crops to grow, all the feed needed for Clarabelle and her 1,200 herdmates. Each cow on the farm will produce enough milk in her lifetime to feed a family of four for 17 years. It's almost as old as I am. But Clarabelle is more than just a mooing, chewing food factory. She's part of Josh and Sam's family. But Clarabelle is more oh I shouldn't scratch me at the same time. But Clarabelle is more than just a mooing, chewing food factory. She's part of Josh and Sam's family heritage that goes back several generations. 
Without knowing it, she and the rest of the cows at Norwest create food, renewable energy, and a successful business. Each day, as Clarabelle ambles down to the lane from the milking center, buries her big wet nose into a pile of fragrant, fragrant feed, and spends hours chewing her cud, her remarkable system produces milk and so much more. So there is Josh and Sam scooping feed for the cows. Here they are feeding a baby. And there's Clarabelle when she had her baby calf again, which she has to have for her to make milk. And that is the end of our book. So thank you guys for sitting with me while we read Clarabelle Making Milk and so much more. I had a lot of fun and I hope that someday I can see you guys in person and make me talk to you guys about dairy. So see you soon and thank you for reading with me.